a shocking revelation, senior Air Force leaders warn that the current state of the United States bomber fleet is leaving our nation dangerously exposed to enemy attacks. The collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991 marked a significant turning point for the Air Force, which has since experienced a dramatic decline. Today, the fleet is a mere shadow of its former self, with only about 1,500 fighters and 135 bombers remaining. By all accounts, this is the oldest, smallest, and least prepared fleet in the history of the Air Force. The numbers paint a grim picture. The average age of a fighter jet is now 26 years, while bombers are pushing 49 years old. Keeping these aging aircraft operational is a constant battle, with only 60% of combat aircraft currently mission-capable. The implications are dire. Should tensions with China escalate into full-scale war, the Air Force would be operating with less than a third of the combat-ready fighters and bombers it had during the last major conflict with a peer adversary. A Brink of Collapse For years, the Air Force has been ordering a minimum of 100 B-21 Raiders at a rate of just 10 jets per year to replace its oldest bombers. However, at this sluggish pace, the Air Force will be lucky to declare its first squadron operational by 2027. This slow progress has raised alarm bells among military leaders and experts who warn that the U.S. urgently needs more stealth bombers to maintain its strategic edge. General Anthony J. Cotton, commander of U.S. Strategic Command, STRATCOM, recently emphasized the critical need for accelerating B-21 production. The limited production rate of the B-21 is the only thing I wish we could do a little quicker, he stated. Despite the B-21 being an incredible sixth-generation platform, the urgency to produce these bombers faster is paramount given the rapid rise of China's military capabilities. China's military expansion has outpaced all expectations, with top Air Force leaders warning that China could move on Taiwan as early as next year. To deter such aggression and prepare for the possibility of war, the Air Force must urgently accelerate the fielding of the B-21 Raider, increasing production to 20 jets per year. This rapid ramp-up is essential to ensuring the U.S. maintains its strategic deterrence. General Thomas A. Boussier, head of Air Force Global Strike Command, highlighted on March 7th that the B-21 Raider will be the future backbone of the bomber fleet. We need credible modern systems, he emphasized. But the pressing question remains, will 100 Raiders be enough to meet the demands of modern warfare? As the B-21 comes online, the Air Force faces a tough decision. Can it afford to maintain its older B-52 Stratofortress, B-1B Lancer, and B-2 Spirit Bombers while integrating the new Raiders? This dilemma suggests that the bomber fleet might shrink before it eventually grows, potentially leaving the U.S. vulnerable during this transition period. The stakes could not be higher. Without a significant increase in stealth bomber production, America's air defense capabilities may be severely compromised. In an era of escalating global tensions, the U.S. cannot afford to fall behind its adversaries in terms of military readiness and technological superiority. The Air Force's current predicament is a stark reminder of the urgent need for modernization and expansion of its bomber fleet. Senior leaders are sounding the alarm, but will their warnings be heeded in time? The future of U.S. air superiority hinges on the decisions made today. Next Great Threat In a startling revelation, General Timothy Ray, a former commander of Air Force Global Strike Command, stated in 2019 that the U.S. Air Force needs as many as 225 bombers to effectively defend the nation. This stark assessment highlights the critical need for an expanded bomber fleet, a sentiment echoed by Mark Gunzinger, a retired U.S. Air Force officer and leader in future concepts at the Mitchell Institute for Aerospace Studies. Gunzinger has called for the Air Force to purchase upwards of 225 B-21 Raiders, stressing that more resources can mitigate future risks. 
A more aggressive acquisition rate for the B-21 can buy back future risk, Gunzinger told reporters. The need to rebuild the bomber fleet is evident. A force capable of simultaneously defeating Chinese aggression in the Indo-Pacific, deterring opportunistic aggressors in other theaters, and preventing nuclear attacks on the United States is crucial. Therefore, the U.S. Air Force should aim to develop a total force of more than 300 bombers, including at least 225 stealthy B-21s. However, the roadblock is Congress, which is unlikely to approve such a massive acquisition due to the staggering cost. The B-21 Raider, expected to cost around $700 million per unit, is the most expensive aircraft ever built. Acquiring 100 of these aircraft would cost $70 billion. Despite the hefty price tag, the argument can be made that the U.S. cannot afford not to build at least 100 B-21s and should seriously consider doubling the order. While the executives and shareholders at Northrop Grumman would undoubtedly welcome an order of 200 or more B-21 Raiders, the question remains, how long will it take to build that many aircraft? Initial planning has begun for the retirement of the B-1 Lancer and B-2 Spirit Bombers, but the game plan heavily depends on the progress in fielding the B-21 Raider. Brigadier General William S. Rogers highlighted the Air Force Global Strike Command strategy in a recent interview, stating, The approach we're taking on the road to a two-bomber force is maintaining our current capability and readiness in terms of our near-peer adversary as the B-21 ramps up. At this critical juncture, the team is focused on maintaining the readiness, availability, survivability, and operational capability of the B-1 and B-2 bombers while preparing for the B-21's introduction. This delicate balance underscores the Air Force's commitment to ensuring that its bomber fleet remains capable and ready to face modern threats. The Next Generation in a recent Air Force bomber roadmap, the service outlined plans to retire the B-1 and B-2 bombers between 2031 and 2032, with a long-term vision of fielding only B-2S and B-52S. While the B-52S are projected to serve until 2050, questions linger about the feasibility of this plan. Extending the B-52 service life to 2050 will necessitate engine replacements and various upgrades, including a new radar system to ensure structural viability and cost efficiency. Yet, even with meticulous execution, there's no guarantee the B-52 will endure until 2050, when these aircraft would be nearly 90 years old. Structurally, the B-52 may seem robust for now, but as the Air Force learned with the B-1, assumptions can swiftly change. Moreover, should the B-52 persist until 2050, Another significant question arises. Will it be replaced, or will the Air Force transition to a single type of bomber in its inventory? These uncertainties are exacerbated by the current state of the Air Force's bomber fleet. Despite being younger than the B-52, the Rockwell-built B-1 faces numerous structural challenges after nearly two decades of continuous operations in Iraq and Syria. There's no guarantee the B-1 will endure until its planned retirement dates without substantial investments. This predicament is concerning, especially as analysts often assume that the United States will perpetually possess the long-range strike capacity it requires. The imperative to rebuild the bomber fleet is clear. A force capable of countering Chinese aggression, deterring opportunistic aggressors, and safeguarding against nuclear attacks is indispensable. Thus, the U.S. Air Force should strive to establish a total force exceeding 300 bombers with at least 225 stealthy B-21s. However, congressional approval for such a substantial acquisition remains uncertain due to the exorbitant costs involved. Project Rapid Dragon In any major conflict with formidable adversaries like China or Russia, the challenges are myriad. Even in the most optimistic assessments, the role of cruise missiles and bombers emerges as critical. Stealth bombers like the B-21 have the unique ability to penetrate advanced anti-access and area denial, 
a 2 AD systems, making them indispensable for direct attacks on high-value targets. However, non-stealth bombers also play a vital role by delivering hundreds of standoff weapons at the onset of hostilities. Consider Russia's integrated air defenses in Kaliningrad. Despite U.S. bases and regional allies, defeating these defenses demands significant bomber participation. While fighters offer critical capabilities, their limited payload and range constrain their effectiveness. Fighters rely on bases and tankers close to the front line, posing security concerns in the face of ballistic missile threats. Bombers excel in weapons capacity and deployment from long distances, making them indispensable assets. Recognizing this, the Air Force explores the bomb truck concept, leveraging cargo jets like the C-17 and C-130 to deploy standoff weapons. This approach enhances flexibility and resilience, mitigating the risk of tracking and destruction by adversaries. In recent tests under Project Rapid Dragon, cargo planes dropped pallets of real or simulated cruise missiles, demonstrating their potential in delivering precision strikes. This innovation expands options for rapid response and enhances strategic capabilities in both U.S. and NATO operations. However, while appealing for their low costs, palletized munitions offer only a short-term solution, with limited supply and high demand for airlift assets. Amidst discussions of bomber capabilities, the question arises, why not procure 300 B-2 SE if such a force is deemed necessary? The answer lies in economics and strategic considerations. While a stealth-only bomber force may seem enticing, it risks neglecting the unique capabilities of non-stealth bombers like the B-52. A diverse bomber fleet offers flexibility across various combat scenarios, ensuring strategic advantage. Moreover, a balanced approach incorporating both stealth and non-stealth bombers proves more versatile and cost-effective in the long run. The development and maintenance costs associated with a stealth-only fleet could strain the defense budget, compromising military readiness and innovation in other critical areas. Thus, strategic planning demands a nuanced approach that harnesses the strengths of both stealth and non-stealth bombers, ensuring readiness and resilience in an ever-evolving threat landscape.